us who uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know if we'll have any of our town council here. Uh, they didn't. My town council wasn't even aware of that that this has been going on until <laughs> our our previous meeting this past Wednesday, and we uh, have some new members on our town council, and uh, one of which I don't even have a contact for yet. So uh, uh, their invitations came rather late, you know. So, uh, but if not, I'll share this with them. I see Ryan Rowe. Uh, I I I. I uh, I have appointed Ryan Rowe our ambassador. So since he's the one on our end who uh, got this all started and uh, and I'm rather excited and it's nine o'clock and um, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm, I'm my biggest fear, I'm going to say something uh, stupid and, and cause an, a huge international <laughs> incident, you know, and we'll all be on CNN tonight, you know. Uh, <laughs> All right, you own the recording, so you yes. can pull it. So who do we have here? My name is Phil Degg, and I am the mayor of uh, Downingtown, Pennsylvania in the uh, United States. And I've been mayor uh, for almost two years now. I was initially appointed mayor uh, when our previous mayor um, had uh, run for a higher office of uh, county commissioner and uh, was successful in that. And I was appointed mayor on, on a Wednesday, sworn in on a Thursday, and on Friday, uh, all hell broke loose, and we started having a, uh, the pandemic here, you know, and, uh, and that's pretty much what I did for at least the first year of uh, being mayor. Um, I was on council uh, for six years prior to that, and... Um, and it's been it's been interesting, you know. There are things that uh, obviously in the days that we live in uh, here with uh, uh, the pandemic and um, uh, things like Black Lives Matter and and the George Floyd incident here, which I'm sure you've all heard of, um, have uh, occupied much of my time, you know. So uh, I subsequently, in the last election in November, I was uh, I ran unopposed, and I am now an elected mayor, which makes me a little happier and um, I see I've done a little bit of research about um, the town of, uh, of Bradnich and um, your mayor and I see that um, your mayor Mr. Taylor has been quite active in, in local government for many years <laughs> now so um, so I would uh, I, I'm going to ask uh everybody just to go around and introduce themselves and tell us a little bit about themselves. Okay, shall I, shall I get the ball rolling? Um, good morning to you both and afternoon for the other ones uh, in Devon signing in. Uh, my name's Luke Taylor, um, Mayor of Bradnooch. Um, our role of mayor usually changes on a, a yearly basis um, and it's elected by the council. Um, and this is my fourth time of doing it. Um, I think I'm a glutton for punishment. Uh, <laughs> well, perhaps nobody else wants to do it. Uh, <laughs> um, Bradley is obviously quite a bit smaller than, than Downington. Our population's around sort of 2,000, 2,200. Um, it's quite a, a stagnant sized town that hasn't really changed in population for well over 100 years. Um, it is very old, many parts of Bradley. If you had a look on some of the parts on, on social media or, or on the internet. Um, as you said, yeah, I'm quite involved with quite a few different things. So I'm also the uh, elected representative on the um, local authority. Um, so we come under Mid Devon District Council and I'm the representative for Brad Lynch on there. And I've uh, been on that twice, uh, or this is my second term, um, and that comes to an end next year. Um, so elections next year, and hopefully for the town council as well. Um, I'll pass over to my deputy mayor, who's uh, signed in with me also in the, the council chamber. And perhaps in a minute, and maybe at the end of the call, I'll spin the camera around just so you can have a look at the council chamber. Um, it's quite, it's more like a museum in here. Um, very old artifacts and bits and uh, old bits and bobs from the town from, from many years ago. Um, but I'll pass over to Emily. Hello, I'm Emily Ottery. Like Luke said, I'm deputy mayor. So current plan is for me to take over the role of mayor in May. Um, we'll see. Luke keeps saying glutton for punishment. I might decide <laughs> to decline that honour. 
Um, as you can probably tell, I am not from Devon. Um, I'm originally from much closer to you guys. I grew up in Connecticut, um, but have been living in the UK for nearly 15 years now. Um, so that's me. Um, my name is Ian Wild. I'm a, I'm a technology consultant. Um, I was uh, brought onto the council uh, just over a year ago uh, to, fill a, to fill a vacancy. Um, when I'm not doing technology, um, I get involved in council activities. My main interest is in what goes on outside the town itself. It's a very, very rural area with uh, lots of large farms, uh, mainly owned by, uh, by Prince Charles. So a lot of land belongs to the Duchy of Cornwall. Don't ask me why a part of Devon is in the Duchy of Cornwall. We don't have time to explain. <laughs> but that and other quirky bits of English history, you will no doubt learn about later on. And you know, you know, Ian has also finish. very humbly omitted to mention that he's the head of our local Morris dancing troupe. <laughs> um, so if you think of a uh, Vic Van Dyke in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang doing the old bamboo dance in the beginning, that is a real thing, and Ian's in charge of it. Wow, bells and all. There was I trying to keep that quiet. <laughs> <laughs> every every, every councillor has their secrets. <laughs> I think Dick Van Dyke is regarded as doing uh, one of the worst British accents in film history, though. But uh, it's still a lovely movie, though. <laughs> uh, well, going around, I guess, um, not, not Annette. Um, <laughs> Allison, yeah, who's the yeah. town clerk? Is that correct? I am. So as I've said to you earlier, I've only just realized that the laptop still says Annette. So I will change that. So I'm Alison Marshall. I'm the clerk of the town council and we've been liaising and also with Ryan as well. So nice to see you today as well. Very nice. I've only, Thanks. I've only been here since last June. So a lot to learn for me, but it's well, lovely to be involved with the twinning. Well, from my standpoint and our email so far, you're doing a great job. So thank you. <laughs> and Jane. Uh, me. Um, I'm Jane Webber. I've been living in Braddon Inch since 1969, so um, 52 plus years. Um, I've been on, I used to be the town clerk for 14 years uh, from about 1984. Um, and then I was quite soon co-opted on as a town councillor after I retired from that. Um, so that's a good many years too. I'm also chair of the Town Trust, which owns the Guild Hall and met quite a few of the assets in the town. Um, it was set up when there was no town council um, for a while. And so there are very few town trusts in, in the country um, that still remain. Uh, and we are lucky enough to be one of them. And we do own certain assets from those days uh, still, including the Guildhall. Um, and we have quite a bit of connection with the Duchy of Cornwall too. Um, I'm involved in quite a few of the organizations, which I'm sure you will hear about. Uh, there are many in, in Brad Ninch, we're very active. And there are, in fact, two other twinning associations. Um, the first one was formed in 1976 with Brittany in France. Um, Land and Fez is the Breton pronunciation of it. Um, and we've got um, commemorative. This, this one was for the 40 years, if you can see it they decided to make a, um, an old horse brass thing with our two badges on. And the last one was the 40th anniversary, which was in 2016. And that's a commemorative, I don't know what you'd call it, like a coin, a disc. Um, and uh, the other one that we have is with a place called Dizzy Bodenberg in Germany, but that one isn't active. We don't seem to have communication with them, but with the French, we have alternate years with them 
or with, they'll be coming to us hopefully in August this year, if they're allowed. Um, I think I've said enough now, really. Um, well, Jane had mentioned <laughs> before the meeting, thank you, Jane, of okay. uh, the accents. And, and for me, I, I don't know, I don't have the ear for that right now. I just, I think of a, an English accent, I think of either a proper English accent, which is pretty much what I'm hearing here today, or like maybe a Dick Van Dyke kind of Cockney accent, you know, but uh, um, so forgive me for that. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm still learning. I have much to learn. Uh, Ryan, tell us a little bit about yourself. And I think you were the one, if I'm correct, who uh, spearheaded this twinning. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Ryan, Ryan Rowe. Uh, I am currently a media producer in Pennsylvania. I'm a citizen of Downingtown. And yeah, I had the idea for this a while ago, um, seeing other cities and towns in Pennsylvania that had twinning relationships where um, they would send groups of students or public officials and things to other countries to learn about their cultures. And I just thought it was a fantastic idea to promote global citizenship, to get especially students interested in learning about other cultures, learning about the world outside of their borders. And uh, I took it upon myself to reach out to different towns, including Bradninch, about becoming our sister city. And I'm excited to be working with you all uh, towards you know, creating a, an active relationship between our two towns and creating something that our students and our citizens can enjoy. Oh, thank you. I agree. I, this is something that that's why I, one of the reasons why I um, asked if I could record this uh, session so I could share it to uh, local teachers around uh, the Downingtown School District so they could see this and perhaps um, want to learn some more and get involved themselves. Um, I did. I was approached um, by a, another Downingtown resident about a year ago about the possibility of uh, twinning uh, with a town in Italy. Um, there's a, a region in Italy that many of our citizens, um, their their uh, grandparents and great grandparents. Um, um, immigrated from uh, back at the, the early 1900s, late 1800s. And so, but um, <clears throat> while that's certainly still an option that we will pursue, um, he did not take this as far as uh, Ryan did. And um, as we all have right now, we have a lot of things going on in our communities. And uh, as the, the mayor uh, pointed out, um, yeah, Downingtown may have you in size, uh, but our, I looked at your history and going back, you know, to, to the Norman times and all. I mean, that, there's there's a lot of history to learn there. You know, I I was lucky enough that in, in uh, 2019 I visited England, and but um, my my trip to England was pretty much limited to London. We spent five days in London and five days in Paris, France, and um, and we took a, a bus trip out to the Harry Potter uh, studios and stuff, but I didn't really get to see any of it. So I think um, uh, before I'm done being mayor, hopefully uh, another uh, uh, trip is in order, you know, and I would definitely love to come and, and visit Brad Ninch. So um, I, 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 I have a question uh, to you, the mayor. Um, I, I noticed your, uh, your regalia there. Is that is that something that you wear at all the meetings or? No, <laughs> definitely not. We wore it. I, I, uh, Emily said that it would be good to wear it uh, so you could have a see what the mayor wears in um, full regalia. Um, there is also a, a hat that goes with it as well. Um, but yeah, it, it's normally only at sort of social events and things like that that I would Very normally good. wear the, the outfit. Usually just in a, in a normal council meeting, it would just be the chains of office. So that's the only bit that you'd normally wear. Um, in the council meeting. I see. Well, that makes me feel a little better because I feel a lot very inadequate because <laughs> uh, this is about pretty like much what I wear. Me. And I am uh, not in our uh, borough hall, as we call it here. Um, 
I'm in my home. So, yeah. <laughs> but I did see a lot of the, uh, at least as far as the greater uh, Devon area, you have a lot of the same um, problems and, and issues to deal with, uh, the challenges that we have here. And I, I when I first go onto your uh, webpage, you know, the COVID and, and the pandemic is uh, first and foremost there. And then in looking at some of the uh, news issues, I see that at least uh, maybe not in Bradnich, but uh, in, in Devon, um, that you have uh, had some issues with developing and, and some developing projects that have uh, had some resistance and stuff. And, yeah. and we have the same same issues here. Of course, our, our population is growing as, as time goes on and all, but I think that there's a lot of uh, similarities and more that as, as we are very different, but I think also a lot of things that are common between us. One thing that is common between us is we both speak the same language. And I was wondering how, like, with your uh, relationship with the, the city in, in France, is that a problem, you know, do, do, or do they, do you all speak French or do they speak English for you or? Shall I answer that one? I think so, Jane. <laughs> um, well, um, what I will say is the previous, the last mayor that, that was the, uh, a member for the longest, uh, he would not speak English, could not speak English, but would not speak English. And so it's very helpful for those of us who did French at school, because I found that I can speak French quite well now. Whereas when I started with the Twinning Association, which is about 27 years ago, I think, um, I was fishing for words, whereas now they come. So it's done us a lot of good, really. Oh, it, isn't, good. it isn't a problem. Those who speak to each other, and um, if neither has the other, can speak the other one's language, a lot of gesticulation with the hands and, and a glass of wine and lots of laughter seems to be okay. So. We, we have wonderful time, actually. It's it's a, a lovely, lovely thing to belong to. So you were referring to some of the international languages like laughter. And, you and can tell cases. I'm enthusiastic. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent. Um, are you all uh, football fans, soccer fans, as we call it here? I am. <laughs> and, and what team do you favor? Uh, I'm an Arsenal fan. Okay, well that's my that's my team now too. Then I just <laughs> I've just become a fan of the uh, the TV program uh, Ted Lasso. I don't know if you're familiar with it and all, but it's about an American guy who comes over to England and coaches uh, football, and it made me want to um, watch uh, f football more than than what I ever have. So. You might you might want to check you know how good Arsenal are before um, <laughs> signing up to being a, a supporter of them. I'm a Philadelphia fan, and if it's I'm a home team, a hometown fan. So so, so I've suffered in our baseball. What you're saying? What's that? You're used to losing. That is what you're saying. Uh yeah. yeah. When you're a Philadelphia <laughs> fan and you're a fan of the Philadelphia Phillies or the Philadelphia Eagles, um, championships are uh, few and far between. So. Yeah, I'm Southern Connecticut, so I'm Yankees fan. So, you know, it's... Ah, uh, I mean, Connecticut. <laughs> yeah, I, I can hear that now a little bit. <laughs> How'd you end up over there across the pond? Uh, my mom's English, so I've got dual citizenship. So I moved to London about 15 years ago and Devon about nine years ago. Nice. Yeah, yeah, it's lovely. And your whole family now live in Bradnich. My whole family now live in Bradnich, which is a bit weird. We've all moved 3,000 miles to the same small town in Devon. Nice. Uh, I think I may move over there eventually. Um, I'm half kidding, but um, <laughs> without getting too political, some of the uh, gun laws in our country, uh, when I start uh, going out to the grocery store and seeing uh, people with guns on their holsters, uh, that's when it's gonna be time for me to leave, you know, but 
without getting uh, too political here. And I, I'm afraid I may have overstepped that bound already with that, but. <laughs> You're speaking to like-minded people, I yeah. think. I, I thought as much, but not everybody who watches this video may feel the same way, you know. But, uh, <laughs> but Pennsylvania hasn't become Texas yet, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's the NHS, that's what we're most proud of. And what is that? The National Health Service. So all of our healthcare is free at point of service. Oh, excellent, excellent. There's a lot of us who are uh, striving to get that here, you know. And I'm I'm very fortunate. I have I've been uh, working. I'm, I've been a driver for United Parcel Service for 34 years now, and I have excellent benefits. And then, um, as in a lot of parts in the world, and um, there's been a mental health crisis and uh, resulted in a uh, we had several of our young people take their own lives in the past couple of years. And of course the pandemic has made that situation even worse. And I was shocked to learn that um, most healthcare um, plans do not cover mental health. And um, I have that, I, I'm lucky. And I wish, I think that should be for everybody, you know? So uh, I don't know. We'll see if we can get there yet. You know, we we Americans, and I'll say this: we like to think we're the greatest country in the world. At least we say that to ourselves. You know, but uh, there's so many issues where, um, in my opinion, uh, we could learn from other other countries, such as yourself, for sure. Well, I still get to vote there every year, so I'm still trying, still working hard. <laughs> yeah, I have to pay taxes there every year. Oh boy. Well, thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> so paying taxes, you get to vote. Yep. Well, I, yeah, I'm a citizen. Oh, you, you change mayor every year. Every year. That's, yeah. and I, you, you mentioned your, uh, being a glutton for punishment. I, I've come to find that being a mayor in a town is almost like being the head of the complaint department, you know, and, and <laughs> And that's a lot of what takes up my time and that's fine. You know, I want to be, um, I want to communicate with the, the, the residents of Downingtown and, and they have concerns, you know, I want to be there for that. But um, I, I was wondering, uh, I went on to the, your borough website or your town website that um, uh, another gentleman is listed as mayor. His, his name was Kennedy. Was he the last mayor? He, he was the last mayor, yeah. Um, okay. Our website, I thought it was up to date, but it's obviously not. Uh, well, there's a there's a link that says message from our mayor. So I, I wanted to hear what what Luke um, had to say and, and Mr. Kennedy was there. Yeah. Uh, so we're let, in the process of switching to a, a new website platform. Yeah, more so, user-friendly. Yeah. Again, we have more in common than, than what you would think. <laughs> we have the same the content issue. content is a bit outdated because we didn't want to get it all up and then switch sites. Take it all down again. When I want a little bit of punishment, um, I've, I've been mayor, like I said, for almost two years now, but sometimes uh, we have one of those uh, Amazon Alexa boxes in our dining room. And, and I just, for a chuckle, I'll say, Alexa, who's the mayor of Downingtown, Pennsylvania? And I think it still has my predecessor, so I have to go talk to Jeff Bezos about that and see if maybe he can get that updated. You know? I think if I asked Alexa that, it would say, where's Brandon? Yeah, where's Brandon? <laughs> <laughs> so you really, I mean, you don't really have room for uh, for population growth. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so we, we are surrounded by fields, uh, entirely surrounded. Um, so the nearest city would be Exeter um, which is about 12 miles it's about 12 and the nearest large town is uh, Columpton which is about two miles um, over quite a, a big hill um, and then you're going to Clumpton where we've got you know supermarkets access to the, the motorway um, you know restaurants and all secondary of that. schools yeah the secondary school is there um, so in Bradford we've only got a primary school uh, and a, a preschool a nursery um, and yeah, so once they go to secondary, they have to either go to Clumpton or, or a, another secondary school local. Um, but because we're in the hills and we're surrounded by hills, uh, there's not a lot of area to, to expand. Either it's good farming land 
um, and there's a lot of farms that surround us, um, or uh, it's too hilly to, to, you know, people to want to build a, a street on. It's too expensive to, to build on hills, whereas they can take a, a flat piece of land. So we're quite fortunate, even when development comes up in the in the, the area, you know, somewhere like Columpton might get put down as 10,000 new homes, potentially, uh, but Bradmint will be signposted for about eight. Um, because of this we, we should say there are some there are very stringent planning laws settlement li limits which are yeah. formed and we it's very difficult to expand to build outside those limits it's they're quite strong constraints aren't they mm -hmm. yeah sometimes people do get by past them though <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Downingtown's about um, one mile uh, wide and two miles long, and we've pretty much um, exhausted our uh, building possibilities within the town, uh, much to the chagrin of many of our residents. But um, I think we have exercised a lot of control. We have a height requirement, a height limit, so uh, buildings can only be um, about three or four stories tall, you know, so we don't have any tall skyscrapers here in Downingtown. We have seen uh, tremendous um, growth in the surrounding uh, townships that surround Downingtown, you know, so it's almost difficult to tell now where the town ends and the country begins. So I think uh, I'm, I'm somewhat envious of uh, the situation that you have there. I think uh, sounds quite lovely, actually. So you're lucky. Enjoy that. Yeah, no, we, I, I think that's why a lot of people, when they move here, not People don't often leave. I mean, Jane's saying, you know, here since 19, I can't remember what you said now. 69. 69. Um, and I've been here since I was 18 months old. Um, my parents still live here. My mum's actually also on the parish council. Um, but she couldn't attend that today. But um, they still live here. You know, I've now got my own family with children and, you know, they go to the, the schools here. Um, and I'm setting up my own family and, and people do like Emily, you know, her parents and her sister all having families now in Bradnick, you know, people often come here and they don't leave, you know, people often stay for quite a long time. Um, obviously people do come in and out, but people do like it. There's so much happening here. Um, and it is a, a stone's throw, you know, lots of the parish itself. Um, so we've got the, the town of Bradnick and we've also got within our parish two hamlets, um, which is called Heal and Trinity. Um, and Heal is uh, probably about 20, 30 houses, something like that. And that's just on the, the very edge of our, our parish. And then we've also got Trinity, which is only a sort of a dozen houses, um, which is also within our parish um, and comes under Bradninch itself. So a lot of the farms and all of that actually come under our parish. So the parish size is quite big. Um, but most of it's rural and most of the population is obviously condensed within the, the town itself. It was the woolen industry originally that settled, um, you know, alongside the River Colm. It was uh, woolen goods, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. So you had uh, woolen mills there? Yeah, we've still got a big paper mill actually in Heal, um, which is still running. Yeah, Downingtown, yeah, when I was a kid, that was the primary industry was paper, uh, the paper mills. In fact, that's when I talk about development, that's one of the uh, areas. The paper mill was um, torn down. They had a fire, um, I guess, about 20 years ago. And now we're um, a developer is developing it, developing it for people to live in. That's one of our biggest challenges that we face right now is um, because uh, when Thomas Downing II settled in, in Downingtown, um, by design, they settled right by the, the river, uh, the Brandywine River. And um, now there's so much growth in the area. We were um, hit with a devastating storm in September, which um, many people are still suffering from, um, from September 1st, you know, and we, ha we still have um, several families who are um, not living, at, not able to live in their homes anymore. We have as the world, as you know, we're facing supply chain issues and, and things like that. So, but we will persevere because uh, that's my job. 
Oh, Could I just add something there? You were talking about the paper mill. I'm going to put this up against the screen. Were you aware that George West, uh, he started work at the Heel paper mill that Emily just... Jane, you're pros. And, and he went over to America and became a congressman. He became a governor and a congressman, George West. I will uh, look him up. I will look in yeah, our history he, book and see if he came to Downingtown or settled near that's here. That's his face. There's his face. Yeah. He's probably not going to be familiar. Um, <laughs> 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 um, I, I, I don't know if you're aware, because we, we do have um, Brad Minch actually features on the America Trail um, of uh, England. Um, and it's a, a stopping off point on the American trails. We've got a plaque down at our church um, because Daniel Boone, uh, the American pioneer. I meant uh, to mention that, yes. Go yeah, ahead, his, I'm sorry. No, no, but his, his family are, are from Bradnage. So um, we've got sort of down at the church, there's like an American plaque saying part of the American trail, you know, Daniel Boone's family were from here, you know, and that was the, the church they went to, which is still our... Yeah still our town's church we also had um a, a camp for the american soldiers during world war yeah. ii situated where our playground is for our kids now but oh. was, i think something like two thousand american soldiers housed out at the camp wow that's interesting that is Chicago. very interesting they've actually where the, where are typically british or english cricket pitches um, they've done surveys on that and you can still see the, the sort of area where the camp was in that sort of vicinity where, where the, the recreation ground is and things like that. And I know when they, they did, uh, when we had houses being built in the town, it doesn't happen very often, but when we did, they even found like old, um, they found an old army vehicle um, tire and things like that that was still embedded in a field um, from when the Americans were here and stationed here. Nice. Well, there's no doubt in my mind that um, even though we uh, stormed out of England uh, 250 years ago, um, you are definitely our most valuable and strongest ally. We, uh, I, I love England. I love all things related to England. And I'm, that's part of the reason why I'm excited to be uh, in this venture here. Oh, that reminds me. We have less than five minutes to go. I don't have the uh, paid for plan. And I thought that usually uh, 40 minutes is sufficient. Um, I, as far as the documents go, you have to go to council to approve this uh, twinning? So it has been approved. We've, we've agreed to it. And um, obviously Ryan's produced the, the, the document and we, the clerk's printed that off. Um, and we were, I've said to the clerk, we'll put it on the, uh, agenda for our meeting on the 15th Tuesday, uh, Tuesday the 15th and uh, I will do a proper signing of it and get some photos done and, and get one sent over to you but we also um, especially for it uh, we've actually got a we got a stamp made so we've got an official town oh. council stamp that we can stamp the uh, the document with now I don't know if we have here, a stamp but... well I will I will then I guess we can I will have uh copies of the document signed and I'll send them over to you and then when yep. you uh, do your formalities you can do the same here and I'm gonna probably um, if it's if I'm not being too forward uh, I think that if I could ask for like maybe three or four copies of it um, so we could have one at the council and one um, in our historical society, which I'm a, a member of as well. You know, I think that that probably for long-term, uh, uh, what's, I can't remember the word, but it would be best saved there, you know, so. And I will, um, I think we should probably maybe meet again a few months from now. And uh, I'm going to share um, this meeting with um, our local schools and I'm sure that our intelligent little children, our students will have some uh, many, many more questions to ask about this. And this is just the, the beginning of something that I think is uh, 
really um, productive and neat and fun. And I'm glad of that. And I appreciate you all um, joining me here today on a Sunday. No, thank, well, thank you. It's uh, always nice to meet new people and, uh, you know, pr progression for both our communities. Absolutely. Absolutely. Does anybody, we have a couple minutes left. Does anybody have any questions or anything else they'd like to say? Well, shall I spin the camera around and Luke can show you yeah. some of the things? Yeah, I'm yeah, that me. would be great. It's quite a, a, an obviously quite an old room. Um, we've even got a sort of list of the, the mayors going back to 1546, still up on the on the wall. Um, so that's when we uh, had our town charter. So when we were first made a town in 1546, so when we first had mayors. Um, and this is our coat of arms, um, or the Bradbank uh, symbol, which is a, a black eagle. Um, and so that's what we use on our stamps, and that's what's on the, 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 the mayor's chain and things like that. That was uh, bestowed on us by the Black Prince, it, just as a matter of interest, history, the Black Prince. Wow. Um, yeah, so there's lots of... Uh, very old bits, and Jane probably knows a lot more about it than um, you should the stocks. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'll show you. So, this is the council chamber. We've got old pictures of mayors dating back many, many years. Um, and the last bit I'll show you just outside of the main room. Uh, Bradminch is the last place to publicly have used stocks. Um, I saw that. Yeah, and uh, our stocks are on display still. Um, we don't put people in them anymore, sadly. I think some people could do with them. At time to time, but yeah, 1866, the last time they were used. And he was in oh. there for drunkenness, uh, Cornelius did it. Oh, you even know that guy. The, uh, old sign from when we had an active railway station. Uh, yeah, no longer a railway station anymore. The, rail, the train comes through, but um, that's, that's uh, yeah, that's not, not an active one anymore, unfortunately. But yeah, been nice to meet you, you both, Phil and, and Ryan. And Ryan, thank you for setting this up. Thanks. Absolutely. It's been splendid Likewise. meeting you all. Uh, Zoom is telling me that our, our time is at an end. So have a wonderful uh, rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice okay. to meet you. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.